Hello, my name is Jason Heron with ESI. I'm the Vice President of Sales. And tell you a little bit about ESI. We've been in business since 1987. We have close to 700 resellers nationwide. So we're in every major city around the United States and most, most second and third tier markets as well. We're a privately held company and we're debt free since our inception. Our 700 partners have sold close to 365,000 phone systems nationwide. So we're not a small company and I'm here today to show you how to set up your comm server demo kit or your IP 900 demo kit. We're going to talk about the features and functionality of each and I'm going to give you some helpful sales tips as we go along the way. But before we do that, you may be asking yourself, why was I required to purchase a demo kit? You've probably been selling phone systems for years and you've never used a demo kit before, so why use one now? Well, statistics prove that you have a 60 to 70% better chance at actually closing the deal if you do a live presentation. Most, not all of your competitors, but most of them do not use a live demo kit or do a demo in any way, shape, or form. They come out with a brochure or maybe they have a telephone, but it's not usually fired up and they try to explain all the features and functionality to the customer. So what they're doing is they're making the customer try to imagine how the phone system would look and how it would actually work and what the functions and features are. Well, if the customer doesn't know any better, I guess that will work. But imagine if you come out with a live demonstration with fired up phones, you're simulating calls coming in and you can demo every aspect of the phone for the customer right then. It's gonna give you a huge advantage over the competition because the customer is gonna think, boy, this guy or girl really knows his stuff. They've been going through all the information, all the features, they know their product. This is the company that I feel good doing business with. I can't tell you how many customers after I've been to their office to do a demonstration or a presentation of the phone system, when it was over, they said how refreshing it was that somebody came out and did that presentation. They said, we're making a huge decision for our company. We're gonna use this phone system for eight hours a day for the next 10 years, let's say. And several of your competitors came out here with a brochure and they were telling us all about it and just kind of had my head swimming. But you coming out and doing a presentation like this today took all the guesswork out. It really makes me feel more comfortable about what we're getting and how the phone system is going to react. Now you may be asking yourself, um, how long should I ask the customer to give me to do my presentation. I would usually recommend asking for an hour and a half to two hours. Why is it gonna take that long, you may be asking? Well, think about it. Once you have your demo kit set up and everybody comes into the room, you start off and you want everybody to relax. You start asking people questions. Everybody makes their um, uh, introductions around the room. Hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm the president of the company, I'm, an, I'm the sales manager, admin, so on and so forth. So, Start talking to everybody, get them comfortable. Ask them why you're there today. You know, why am I here today? Um, what features do you know you wanna talk about today? What are the features that your current phone system cannot do that you're gonna need me to demonstrate for you today? So after you do your introductions and visit for a little bit, that's when you wanna do your presentation. As you start to demo certain features and technology that they're asking about, if they stop you in your presentation because they're interested in something, don't rush past it. Let them talk, interact with them. Why is that feature important to you? How are you gonna use that in your company? Tell me exactly why you're asking about that. Let them know that anything they ask is extremely important to you and pay attention because sales is about listening, not about talking. So as you go through the demonstration, a real presentation, you're gonna find that they're gonna become very interactive. Even if they start off in the real quiet, at some point they're, you're gonna hit hot buttons and they're gonna start asking you questions about it. Take your time, work yourself through the demo, and then when the presentation is finished, that's when you want to ask questions like, um, can you see this phone system in your office? Were there any features or functionality that I didn't talk about that you needed to hear about today? Is there any questions or concerns you have? Is there something that I need to cover that I haven't covered yet? And you want to ask all those types of questions, and then at the end, start working on your close. The next thing I'd like to point out is, if possible, you always want to be the last person to do the presentation. Think of it this way, if you have two competitors in on the deal and they go first, if you come in last, you can ask the customer, what did you like about those phone systems? What did you not like? Was there any questions or concerns that you had after looking at those systems? And that's going to help you tailor your solution to win the deal. You're not always going to be able to go last. So if you go first, let me recommend that when you're done with your presentation, tell the customer, 
I'm sure you're doing your due diligence and if you're going to look at a couple of other systems, do yourself a favor and make sure that our competitors come in and do a live demonstration of the products. A lot of people out there come out with a dead phone or a brochure and they leave it up to your imagination and that's dangerous because if you invest and you purchase that phone system and you never actually saw how it works, when they put it in and you start asking, how do I do a conference call? How do I transfer? How do I put somebody on hold and page? And you don't like, because you don't like it because it's difficult to do those functions and those features and things like that. You're stuck with that phone system for several years and you and all your employees are going to use it for eight hours a day or longer. So remember, if your competition, most of them do not have a demo kit, you're setting them up for failure when you tell the customer, make sure you, you tell whoever's phone system you're looking at, whoever it is, make sure they do a live demo. So you are setting the competition up for failure and if they can put a demo together, it's not going to be as good as what you're about to do for them. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up your communication server demo kit. So I'm going to reach over here and pick up the KSU or cabinet and this is your comm server demo kit. And so you can get a look at that. I'm going to turn it sideways here if you can look at this piece. The next thing I have is what we call a harmonica jack. And it has a piece of paper on the top here with different extensions. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go sticker side up and you're going to plug it in right here. Just like that, okay? So I'm going to set that down. And what I'm gonna show you next is the 60 digital phone. It looks just like this. So I'm going to turn the phone to the back and explain a few things to you here. Your handset uh, plugs into the port that says handset. You have a headset port right here. You can plug in any type of headset that you want. Some of the more popular ones are Plantronics or GN Netcom. You can use the ones with an amplified base. You take your headset off and charge it overnight, but you don't have to. You can use the headset that just has a line cord that goes and plugs right there into the headset jack and you can adjust the volume with the up and down arrow keys. You also have a line key that goes in right here and over here is your expansion port. Think of a receptionist that there's a lot of employees at the company. So what you do is you get an expansion console that daisy chains from this port to the expansion console and then over to another one. So each expansion console has 60 programmable buttons on it, so you can do two of those, giving you 120 extra buttons other than what's on the phone itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set this phone down for a second, and this is your line cord. So let's take this. You've got two ends here. So the first one we're going to plug into the line port on the back of the phone here, which is right here. Goes in just like that. The other end, and this is your 60 button phone is going to plug into, if you can pan down to the cabinet here, um, you can see extension 100. Goes in right there. So the 60 button phone belongs to an employee. We're gonna call her Amy. She's extension 100, so it just plugs in like that. Next thing we're gonna grab is the 48 key phone. Digital phone, it looks just like this. If you turn it to the back, you can see your handset jack. Again, you've got your line cord here, your expansion port here that goes to the 60 button expansion consoles, and of course your headset jack right there. So take your line cord, one end is going to go right there where it says line, plugs in just like that. And then the other end, okay, is going to go into extension 103. You can see it right there. And that phone belongs to an employee called Doug. So we've got Amy and Doug, two imaginary employees at the company. So let's set that down. The next thing we have is this right here called a presence management or access control reader. So let's unravel this. And this is what it looks like right here, okay? If you turn it around, look at the back, there's a cord that goes into the back right here. You don't have to mess with that. And so the other end is going to plug into extension 106 on your cabinet. So let's do that now. Set it off the side there. The cabinet up, you can see extension 106. You're going to plug it in there, just like that. Put the cabinet down. Next thing we're going to do is take your power cord and 
you guessed it, we're going to plug it in. So looking at the cabinet, if you zoom in, it says 24 VAC. You're going to plug it in right there. And then this is going to plug into the wall. So, okay, so once you've plugged your power cord in, it's going to take anywhere typically from two to five minutes for it to do its initialization process. So um, if the phones do not boot up immediately or if they have a backlit display but there's nothing in it, don't panic. It takes a couple of minutes for the process to finish. But if you take a look at the cabinet here, you will see the red heartbeat. Um, after four or five minutes, once it's done uh, booting up, you're going to see that flash and that means you're ready to go. So let's take a look at the 60 button phone. You can see now that the display is lit up. You can see that there are things in the display and it's ready to roll. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put the stand on the back of the phone. This is your plastic stand right here. If you look closely, it has two feet at the bottom, two feet at the top. And on the back of the phone, if you look carefully, you have different settings. Those are there because customers like to have their phones adjusted to different heights on their desk depending on their preference. So let me show you the wrong way to put a stand in. That's to come from the top like this and try to push it down. It's not going to work. You come from the bottom up. Okay. So the, re the stand place that I recommend when you're going to do a demo is start at the bottom two holes on the 60 button phone and just push it up just like that. Snap it into place. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set this phone down. And we're going to take a look at the 48 key phone for a minute. Okay, it has a different looking stand that looks like this. Still got two feet at the bottom, two at the top. It's just shaped a little differently. Same scenario though, you don't go from the top down, you go from the bottom up. Well, in this situation, you have different uh, adjustment heights here. I'm going to say not the first set of holes, but the second one is the one I like to use in the demo. And then you just push it up and snap it into place. One thing I don't think I mentioned earlier, there's two holes here on both phones where you can hang it on a wall in a kitchen or a warehouse as well. So let's go ahead and set that phone down. And you want to get those phones together. So go ahead and look at both phones for a minute. The reason I told you those particular heights is because when you're doing a presentation, it doesn't matter how many people are in the room, if there's three people or six people in the room, you're going to ask them to go to the other side where you're sitting at right now looking at me. You don't want them on the ends of the table for obvious reasons, because if they're down there, they're not going to be able to see the phones. So ask everybody kindly to go to this side of the room where everybody can see the phones and the presentation that you're about to give. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to enter your fobs into your presence management reader so that when you're ready, you can demo that. So this is your presence management reader. It looks just like this. If you look at the back of it here, it has a cord that plugs into the demo kit. So there's two types of keys that employees can use to enter the building. The first one looks like this, if you can zoom in on that. This is what we call a teardrop fob, and if you look carefully, it has a serial number on it. And so what happens is the first time you wave your teardrop fob across that presence management reader, it enters the serial number into the phone system, and then you can assign that serial numbered fob to an employee and grant them or deny them access through these external presence management readers, and so on and so forth. The other type of fob is a card fob that looks just like this. It's not the teardrop, it's a card. If you have a colored display scanner, you can actually scan a picture of the employee on it if you like, but you don't have to. Another popular thing is called a zip line. It's a little connector that goes on your belt and it just hangs and you can just pull it up and when you let go, it zips right back down to your belt or a pocket or something like that. So what I want you to do now is pan down where you can see both phones uh, in the screen as well as this reader and this fob. The first time on your comm server demo kit that you wave this card access across the reader, it's always going to connect to Amy's phone on your demo kit. So here we go. Zoom in on this uh, reader especially as long as you got it all. It says card red. It just took the serial number on the back of this card and put it in there. The next time I wave it, if you especially watch this phone and watch what's going to happen to this green button right here. Now it's telling you Amy just left the building. 
Now Amy's back in the building. We're gonna talk more about that later, but it's ready to do your demo once you've done that sequence. The next thing you wanna do is take your teardrop fob, and when you wave it, it's gonna enter the serial number, and it's always gonna to connect to Doug's phone. So here we go, I'm gonna wave it. It says card red. When I wave it again, it should say goodbye for Doug. Goodbye. And then now Doug's back in the building. So now you're ready to do your demo uh, later on for presence management because everything is set up properly. So now what you probably want to do is take your cabinet because you see all these wires and so forth down here. Take your cabinet fobs and everything, put it underneath the table so that when you invite the um, potential client into the room to do your presentation, they don't see this phone system with wires and gaudiness and all that. Put it under the table and have a clean environment where all their eyes are focused on are the two phones in your presentation. And when you're ready to bring out your presence management reader later and demo that, you can. So let's do that now. It's important to note that when you go on an appointment, uh, tell the customer, let's say the demo is supposed to start at 10 a.m., you want to get there at about 9.40, about 20 minutes early, and tell them you need time to set up your demo kit so that you're ready to give your presentation. And so just ask them if you can have a few minutes in the demo room to get set up. The worst thing that, that can happen is you show up right when you're supposed to do the demo and you got four or five people in there staring at you while you're trying to set your demo kit up. You don't want that. So get there early, get set up, get your composure, and be ready to do your demonstration. I'd like to point out there's a few things that I'd recommend that you do um, before the presentation starts. Um, the first thing is looking at this telephone right here, you can see that there's a blue voicemail key flashing and a caller ID key flashing. You want to go ahead and turn those off. You don't want the phones to look too busy when you're ready to start your presentation. So just hit the caller ID button. And then when it starts talking, hit your speaker key right here at the bottom, and now it's no longer flashing. Your blue voicemail key, you want to press it. It starts to play your voicemail, hit 7, and delete it. And see, now the phone doesn't look as busy. The caller ID key's not flashing, and the blue voicemail key's not flashing. It's ready to go. Well, one more thing. Hit speaker. You can hear the speaker tone there. And hit the up key in the display, the arrow that goes up. And turn the volume all the way up and then hit speaker again to turn it off. You do that because when you're doing your presentation for the potential prospect, you want them to be hear the phone when it's talking and everything that it's doing. Now you want to do the same thing for your 60 button phone over here. Your uh, caller ID key is flashing, press it, and then just hit release or speaker at the bottom down here. It's no longer flashing. And you want to hit speaker, and then turn your volume all the way up, and then just hit speaker again. Now you're ready to do your presentation. So now while we're panned in on the phones, let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, I usually start the presentation and, and you can do it here, but what is this? This is an indicator light and it's real simple. If you're on the phone, it's gonna be lit red. So if I walk in your office right now, I can see this lit red. I know not to come in talking. That's what it's for and you can see it 360 degrees around the room. Even if this handset was cradled, it was sitting in its cradle, if you have a headset on and that is cradled, this light will still be on because you're actually engaged in a conversation. So that's essentially how that works. It's the same over here. If I pick up the handset, now you're on the phone, it's gonna, be, it's gonna light red on this phone as well. If I hang up, it goes out. So let's talk a little bit about the buttons. So if you'll zoom in on my 60 phone right here for just a minute. You have eight programmable buttons here, and you have eight programmable buttons over here. It can be anything you want. These buttons are blank. They can be line keys. They can be features. They can be extensions of other employees that you work with at your location or other locations. And they can also be speed dials for your favorite customers or family or whatever the case may be. Now, if you'll pan over here to the other phone, what we call the 48 key phone, these are your programmable buttons. You have 30 of them over here. Same thing, lines, extensions, features, or speed dials. You can program those keys as anything that you like. So now let's pan to where we can see both phones in the picture at the same time. One thing again when you're going to be doing your presentation is tell the customer, we're going to pretend that these phones belong to two of your employees. Amy may be the receptionist or an employee at the office. She's extension 100. Doug is also an employee at the office. He's extension 103. 
So the other color I want to point out to you over here on Doug's phone is this button right here and it's lit green. What that means is you have a feature, in this case Doug has an in greeting key program there, and when it's lit green that means that's the greeting that your customers are going to hear when they call you. So if you pressed it, it'd probably say something along the lines of, hello, this is Doug, I'm in the office, but away from my desk, leave a message. So whichever greeting key you hit, it's gonna light green and that's what customers are gonna hear. I'm gonna show you how you can simulate calls coming into your uh, demo kit so that you can show that to a customer. So this top button right here, um, if you press it, it actually says CO call. And when you hit it, give it a second, and it actually rings the telephone. So there's two ways you can pick it up. You can pick it up with a handset, but I'm gonna recommend doing it with the speaker button at the bottom. That way you're not uh, grabbing the handset constantly through the demo and the customer's going like this, the potential customer watching you the whole time. You want their eyes on the phones at all times. So simulate the call coming in, answer it with speakerphone, and then point out to the customer that the display will actually show the caller ID name and number when the person called in. So in this case, we're talking to Acme Tires. So this is a good time to show them what happens if another call comes in, because people deal with that every day. You're on the phone and then another call comes in. So we're gonna press the CO call button again. You hear the call waiting beep, letting you know somebody's calling on the other line. And you have caller ID so you can see who it is. It's Daxus. So when I hit flash, if you'll look at the display here, the arrow actually bounces back and forth every time I hit the flash key and it's actually gonna point at the person that you're actually talking to. In this case, I'm talking to Daxus. So what's happening with Acme Tires? They're on the other line holding for me and they're actually listening to the built-in music on hold or whatever uh, I've customized for that company so they can advertise about their business, whatever you'd like us to do there. When you're done with a call, um, in this case, let's hang up with Acme Tires. So the arrow's pointing at Acme and I'm gonna hit release or speaker. Either one will hang up. And if you have someone on the other line, it rings you back and says, hey, you got someone on the other line. So I'm going to hit speaker again. So in this case, once again, we're talking to Daxus. Now you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's little squares and one of those is filled in. What those squares represent is line appearance. So if this company has six lines, you'll have six empty boxes. And every time somebody goes off hook and is talking to someone, one of those will be shaded in. That's powerful because oftentimes the customers don't know when they're out of lines. If all of their lines are in use, the next customer that calls into their business is getting a busy tone. So it gives you an idea of your line usage on the phone system and lets you know when you may want to add more lines or maybe even save some money. Your company has had a reduction in force and you don't need as many lines. You can cut a few of those out and save some money. Okay. So this button right here says ESI Dex. It's called your Easy Dex button. And think of it like this. If you have a cell phone and you want to put somebody in there, you can program them into your cell phone. And then when you want to call them later, you just dial the first three letters of the person's first or last name and it'll find them. Same thing here. Let's say you're talking to Daxus and you want to store them like you would in a cell phone into your personal Rolodex of your actual telephone. All you have to do is hit this button one time and in the display it says caller ID stored. So it just stored Daxus into my personal Rolodex. No one else in the building, everybody's got their own telephone, but that phone number won't be in anybody else's phone, only mine. That's my personal Dex. So in this case now I'm gonna go ahead and hang up on by hitting release or speaker at the bottom here. And so the next thing you wanna do is show the customer how they can pull Daxus that you just stored out of their personal Rolodex. So what you do is you're gonna hit easy Dex, and when I do, the phone is going to start talking and it's going to tell you what you can do, but there's four different options that it's going to give me and the one that we're going to go into at first is called your personal Rolodex. Press a menu key as displayed for the EasyDex directory you wish to access. So hit personal. To search for the name you wish to dial, press a scroll key or the first three letters of the name. So let that play out and now if I scroll up it's going in alphabetical order. Well, the easier way to do it is just like you would on your cell phone. Hit the first three letters, D-A-X for Daxus, and there they are. And here it says edit if you want to edit the name and number, or it says easy Dex says dial over here. And if I press that, if this was a real phone system, not a demo kit, it would be speed dialing Daxus Incorporated. So now I'm going to hit release or, or speaker down here to hang up. How many of those can you store? Thousands and thousands. I've never seen anybody use them all, so tell them to store away. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the station decks. 
And how you would access that is you'd hit your Easy Dex button, and it's the second button in right here. And before I demonstrate that live, let's talk about what the Station Dex is. It's a list of all of the employees at your company and what extension they're at. So if it's a small company with four or five employees, this isn't as important because you probably have everyone's extension memorized because there's only a couple people there. But bigger companies, let's say they have 100, 200 employees, there's no way you're going to have everyone's names and everyone's extensions memorized. So they're actually going to be inside the telephone. So think about this. Almost every person you're going to talk to, if they're a bigger company, ask them this question. Say, does everyone here have a piece of paper taped at their desk somewhere or in a drawer or something that has all the employees at your company and what extension they're at? And most of the time they're going to say yes. And in a world where everybody wants to go green, you want to stop killing trees. And so as big companies, they're constantly hiring new employees and killing trees and handing out new extension lists almost weekly as employees come and go. You don't have to do that anymore with an ESI phone system because they're all going to be programmed into the phone system by whoever is in charge of it, being the IT person or the reseller or whatever. So remember, this is Amy's phone and this is Doug's phone. The 48 key phone belongs to uh, Doug. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Easy Dex. Press the menu key as displayed. Your second button over it says STA access. Station. Search for the name you wish to dial. Press the scroll key or the first three letters of the name. So you can scroll up in alphabetical order, or the easier way is to spell D O U for Doug, which is this phone over here. And then when you hit Dial or Easy Dex again, it's going to call that phone, and then you can just pick it up. So you're calling that employee. So that's how the station decks work. So if we were to hire a new employee tomorrow named John Doe, somebody could easily go in and put in John Doe's name and extension and every phone in the building, if you had 200 phones, they would all have John Doe in their station decks. Or if Sally may quit tomorrow, we could easily take her name and extension out and it would no longer appear in everyone's phone. So you can see how easy that is for a company to keep it updated at all times without having to hand out those extension lists. Your third button, once you hit Easy Dex and you go three buttons over, is going to be your system wide Dex. So, the last one we said was stations. That's the employees and what extension they're at in your building. System wide Dex is phone numbers that um, the IT person or somebody in charge of the phone system would put into the phone system, and everybody in the building has access to those. So think of it, what phone numbers would everybody in the company need access to? Companies like FedEx, UPS, I don't know, Papa John's Pizza, whatever you want to put in there, vendors you do business with, those are the phone numbers that go in there that everybody can grab. And it works the same way, let me demonstrate now. You go Easy Dex, System Wide Dex, so you just scroll through in alphabetical order or the first three letters, same scenario. The last one I'm going to show you is called your Location Dex. Let's talk about that for a minute. What is your location dex? With an ESI phone system, you can link up to 100 offices together. It can be a comm server like we're demoing today. It can be an IP900 phone system, which is a pure voice over IP system. Um, and it can be any, any of them. So any comm server, the 900, you can link 100 offices together. So oftentimes what you might need to do is, we're in Dallas right now, maybe I want to see the names of employees in my Houston location, or in Chicago, or something like that. So let me demonstrate how you would do that. You hit Easy Dex, press the menu key. LOC right here is for location. So when you scroll up, here's Chicago. If you scroll again, here's your Dallas office. Hit it again, Houston office, up to 100 locations, depending on the size of your business. So if you want to see the employees in Houston, you hit next right here. Press the next key to Two times, hit it one more. And here's the names. Here's Dave. If you scroll up, it'll stop talking. Sometimes that can bother you. Uh, here's Julia. And there's three examples. Here's Mark. When you're demoing, if you go four times, no match it's going to say no match found, which looks a little weird. So just show explain it in the first two or three entries because there's only so many to show. So here's Mark T in Houston. If I wanted to call him, I'd hit Easy Dex where it says dial here in the display. And if it was a real phone system, it would call Mark station to station and ring his phone in Houston and there'd be no long distance charges because we're uh, doing voice over IP and it's uh, through what we call Easy Link. So once again, if they hire a new employee in Houston, John Doe there, and they put that person's name in, 
I can find him in my location decks at any of my other locations. We had a hundred offices. Everybody can instantly see John Doe in the Houston location. So everything's done on the fly once you put it in one time. So the next thing we're going to talk about is this button right here. It's called the record key. And if you want to take a look at the other phone, it's going to operate the same over here. The record button is right here on the phone. So let's go back to the 60. So with either phone, um, you can record anything you want, anytime you want. So let me give you an example. If I hit the record key right now, it's recording my voice. So I could do a memo to myself, whatever I want to say. Or even more importantly, let's say we're having a meeting and I'm in a conference room right here. And let's say there's five people sitting around the table in different places around the table. If I hit the record key, I could record that entire meeting and then when it's over, when I hang up, it can convert that recording into a WAV file and send it to my inbox uh, as an email. And then I could archive it, or if I ever wanted to listen to it again, I could do that. So you can record memos, meetings, or even live conversations when you're talking to somebody on the phone. So right now, it's been recording me, and um, if I wanted to, I could just hang up. So this phone is so awesome that it does what we call voice leveling. In other words, the HD handset and speaker phone and everything is so good that when you're recording in a meeting environment or something like that and people are sitting around the conference table, uh, it does the best job that I've seen in the industry of taking everyone's voice and when you play it back, it sounds really good. So a lot of our competitors out there will have a mic on the phone and if you're sitting where you are right now looking at the phone and, you play, and you're recording something and you play it back, it sounds pretty good. But if you're sitting on the sides or behind the phone where I'm at and you play it back, it sounds terrible. But let me give you an example of how this works. So I'm standing behind the phone right now testing one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to ask my lovely camera crew to say something on that side. Hello. One more. Hello. Hello. Testing. And now I'm going to walk over here to the left of the phone, testing one, two, three, four. All right, so now I'm going to show you, I'm going to play it back. So I'm going to hit release, which hangs up. And what you're going to do is this right here is called visual voicemail. It's showing all your voicemails. So your recordings are always going to be at the end of your voicemails. So what I'm going to do is hit the voicemail key. Please select the voicemail you wish to hear. And then I'm going to page, hit this second button down here and it'll go to the second page and actually says recordings at the bottom down here. So I'm going to play the last recording. So I'm standing behind the phone right now testing one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to ask my lovely camera crew to say something on that side. Please select the voicemail you wish to hear. Hello. One more. Hello. Testing. Hello. And now I'm going to walk over here to the left of the phone testing one, two, three, four. All right. So now I'm going to So you can hear no matter where we were in the room as people were in different places around the room when you played it back. There was no dip in audio. It sounded good all the way around. That's the HD quality of these telephones. Uh, another cool thing that you can do um, that I've never seen any phone system be able to do is this. I'll show you. I'm going to simulate a call coming in. I'm going to answer it with the handset. I'm just going to pick it up. So in this case, it says I'm talking to front row. So if you wanted to record the conversation, you could simply hit the record key and it starts flashing green. And it shows you in the bottom right hand corner of your display, it starts a timer showing you how long you've been recording this conversation for. Well, any other phone system in the industry I've seen, if they can record a conversation, if they want to send that recording to, let's say, five other people in the company, they would have to hang up, hit voicemail, pull the, the recording up, and then send it to each person by hitting their four or five digit extension pound. I want to send it to John, four digit extension pound. Susie, four digit extension pound. Richard, four digit extension pound. So you get the point. So if you're sending it to five people, you could very well be hitting 25 to 30 keystrokes to send that recording to those people. It's not that way with ESI. We call this feature quick move. And like I said, I've never seen any other system that could do this. While we're talking to front row and I'm recording it with my timer, if I wanted to send it to somebody, I could simply hit their button and watch what it shows in the display. I'm going to hit Doug shows his name. If I hit Eric, hit the key, it says his name. If I hit Lou, it's going to start counting by parties because there's only so much room in the display to show names, but it says parties three. I can hit as many buttons as I want, and when I hang up, it goes to all of them. So if I hit five people, that's five keystrokes versus our competitors doing 25 to 30 keystrokes. 
So that just shows you the simplicity of the ESI phone system versus what everybody else is doing. Now watch this, if I decided, let's say I was talking for a minute and 45 seconds and the person I'm talking to tells a joke all of a sudden and I'm thinking in my mind, oh no, I had Lou and Eric on this and I don't want them to hear it after all. You can even go back down here and you can hit Lou and watch what it does in the display. If you hit his button, it takes him out. If I go down here and hit Eric, I just took him out. So even though at this time I've been recording for two minutes, when I take those guys out, they don't get anything. They're completely removed. They're not going to get anything from that recording. Or on the flip side, if I'm two minutes into this recording and I say, Eric needs to hear this, I could come down here and hit Eric. He doesn't come in right then. He gets the entire recording. It goes all the way back from when I first pressed the record key. So it works in your, to your advantage either way, adding somebody so they get it all from when you first press the record key, or if you take them out, they get nothing. So in this case, it's gonna go to Doug and Eric, and this is Doug's phone over here. So when I hang up, and if you'll pan over and look at my 48 key phone, I'm gonna hang up in three, two, one. You'll see that it just pops up. So now taking a look at this phone, it has a flashing indicator light, meaning that you've got a new voicemail or recording sent to you, and your voicemail key is flashing. So when this person comes back and hits their voicemail key, watch what it does. So I'm going to talk about that for a second. The first thing it showed you is it said this recording was sent to you from another user. So it's telling that person somebody sent you a recording. So it says via Amy. That means Amy in the building sent you a recording. And then after that, it shows the original caller ID of the original recorded conversation. So you have the caller ID of the actual customer and time and date in a reverse order countdown showing you how long that recording is. So let's do it one more time just so you can see. So all you do is hit your voicemail key. This message was recorded from another user via the quick move feature. Actual caller ID, reverse order countdown. Again, that's called quick move. Think of it like this. Um, I'll just use an example. A car dealership and you've got a salesperson and somebody calls and says, I'd like to buy a Lexus. And they're giving the sales rep the details. I'll take a black Lexus, chrome wheels, a monsoon stereo, sunroof, and I'm not paying a dime more than $500 a month. Well, the sales rep could be recording that conversation and he or she could then click the buttons for my sales manager, Fleetwood manager, general manager, accounting manager, and that recording could go to all those different people. So every company you're talking to out there can use the record button in different ways, but that's why I call it quick move. You record it and quickly move it to other people. So let's take a look at the 60 button phone again for a second. Let me show you another thing that no other phone system can do. I'm going to simulate a call coming in and this can be the receptionist or anyone in the building for that matter. But you take a call and they say, yes, can I talk to Doug please? And I just saw Doug walk out the door and go to lunch. I would say, Doug's not in right now, can I take a message? And they say, no, I want you to, or, I'm sorry, Doug's not in right now, can I put you in his voicemail? And they say, no, I've been trying to get a hold of Doug for two days. I need you to take a message and hand deliver it. I want to make sure he gets it. Well, you could simply hit record and then come down here and hit Doug's button. And you could say, okay, I've got a pen here. Go ahead and give me the message. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll make sure Doug gets it. And when you hang up, remember, it's going to instantly jump over to the other phone. And there it is. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that anytime you're on a call, you can hit record and hit the person's button. And so you never have to handwrite a message ever again. No one in the building, just hit record, listen to what they have to say and hit the person's key and it goes over there. It's an awesome feature and it's a big differentiator. Okay, so back to the 60 phone over here, we're gonna kind of go down this row of features right here for a minute. So the first one that's lit green says end greeting. And so when you're showing this to a customer, I recommend pressing the end greet button and letting it play all the way through. Hi, this is Amy. I'm on the phone and I've stepped away from my desk. Please leave me a message at the tone and I'll call back as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay, so your end greeting is real simple. I'm in the office but away from my desk, leave a message. Everybody has one. Well, the thing that a lot of people take for granted is um, 
that, that doesn't wow a lot of people, wow all phone systems have an end greeting, but how easy it is on an ESI system to record that greeting is, is very simple. Most phone systems can be difficult. So all you do is when you press it and you want to re-record it, simply hit the record button. Hello, this is Jason. I'm in the office, but away from my desk. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Hello, this is Jason. I'm in the office. And that's, e that's how easy it is to change your greeting. Hello, this is Jason. I've been on demos and stood in front of, I don't know, thousands of customers now. And oftentimes I'll just ask a simple question, and you may have six people in the room. Uh, how many people in here know how to change your personal greeting? And there's always some people that know how to, but you'll be surprised how many people don't know how to. They may have the same greeting on there that they've had for four years. Well, if it's as simple as hitting one button and record, they can say things like, hello, this is Jason, it's August 27th, or whatever day it is, and I'm in the office today, so you can change it daily to give that personal touch to your customers. Your next button down says out greet, okay? And I'm gonna press that, and you wanna let that play all the way through to the customer when you're demonstrating this. Hi, this is Amy. I will be out of the office today, but please leave a message after the tone, and I'll return your call when I get back. If you need to speak to me right now, you can dial four now to reach me on my cell phone. Okay, so your out greeting changes the same way, just out greet and record. But if you listen carefully, Amy said, I'm out of the office, and that's, that's all you have to say, leave me a voicemail. But she did something different. She said, this is Amy, I'm out of the office, please leave me a voicemail, or if it's urgent, you can press four now to reach me on my cell phone. So what happens is, if they press four, it's gonna actually ring your cell phone, and when it rings and you answer it, the cell phone is gonna have the actual caller ID of the calling, of the calling party coming to your phone so you can screen your calls as long as they're on a PRI. And, um, if you want the call, the phone's going to tell you, if you want this call, press 1 now to be connected. So when you hit 1, it sends a beep or an alert tone, a, a DTMF tone, back to the phone system. And when the phone system hears that beep, it connects you. You've got your call. If you're looking at the caller ID and you say, I don't want to talk to this guy right now, just don't hit 1. It'll pull the call back to the phone system where they originally called and they leave you a voicemail back at the office, not on your cell phone. Okay? In the world we live in today, cell phone is huge. If you can't integrate your cell phone into the phone system, you're not going to sell too many systems. So there's another feature called twinning. And this is really important. What twinning means is when they call your office phone and it rings, it will twin or simultaneously ring your cell phone. There's a difference. The feature I just showed you says, hey, if you want to reach me on my cell phone, press four. Twinning is different. It says, always ring my cell phone. When you ring my desk phone, ring my cell phone. So no matter where you're at, if you're in the office or out of the office, it's ringing both and you can always grab it wherever you're at. Now twinning comes with some other cool features too. If it's twinned and you take a call, let's say you're out in your car driving, and you got a call, you can actually transfer it from your cell phone back to employees into the phone system. So I can say, oh, you need to talk to Bill Hall. I don't have to say, hang up and call ESI. I can just say, let me transfer you right now. So think of all the companies you could go out there to, insurance companies, attorney's offices, um, car dealerships. There's a million types of companies out there and in the business world, you're on your cell phone and you need to transfer it back to the office, you absolutely can do that. This is a comm server, communication server demo, but our IP900 demos the exact same way. And uh, it actually has something called the 900 mobile app. So if somebody needs a mobile app, not just calls transferring to the phone, but if you want to turn your phone into an actual extension off of the phone system, you would sell an IP900 phone system that has that technology. And what that means is it's an app on your phone, and if you hit the app and make an outbound call, it won't show the caller ID of your cell phone going out. It'll show the name of your company going out instead of your personal cell phone. Think of it like this. Think of an attorney that's a, a criminal attorney, for example, and he's defending bad people, I don't know, ax murderers or something. He doesn't want those people having his cell phone number, so when he calls them, he wants to show his company, not his personal cell phone number. Doctors are the same way. There's tons of people out there that don't want to give their personal cell phone number out, so they'll use that app to show the company's information going out. So the next thing I'm going to show you is what we call the page greeting key. And it's the third button down here, so when you press it, let the customer hear it all the way through. Hi, this is Amy. I'm currently on my phone or away from my desk. If your matter is of an urgent nature, please dial three to have me page. 
So Amy's waiting on a very important call, but she needs to step away from her desk. She hits the page greeting key, and when she does, it lights green. So whichever greeting key you hit, it's gonna light green, and that's what people hear when they call in. So she turns it on, leaves her office, and she goes somewhere else in the building. That important, call, that important customer calls in, and when he hits Amy's voicemail, it says, this is Amy, please leave a message, or if it's urgent, press three now to have me paged. The customer presses three, and it pages through every phone in the building. Amy, you have a call on line one or it'll page through the overhead speakers, or it'll page through the phones and the overhead speakers. It's whatever the customer wants. We can set it up any way you want. So that's how the page greeting key works. You don't want to have everyone in a large company, you don't want to give everyone that page greeting key because pages will be going off all day long. It's really for executives and high level management and people that need to be reached on an important call, but it is there. This is my personal favorite feature. Um, I've sold a ton of phone systems based off of this and I haven't seen any other phone system out there do anything like it. And so looking at the 60 phone right here, um, four buttons down is your virtual answer key. <clears throat> and think of it this way, how many times a day are you on a call and another call comes in? It happens all the time. You have to tell the person you're on the phone with, hey, can you hold on one second? I got another call coming in. You flip over, talk to them for a second, and you, you're playing this back and forth game all day. Well, what you can do is you can program a virtual answer key on your phone and let me show you how to record something behind it. So you hit virtual answer Hello, and then record. To record your greeting for this virtual answer key, press 1. Begin recording at the tone. Press 1 when finished. Hello, this is Jason. I see that you're calling in right now and your call is important to me, but I'm on the line with another customer. Hold on, I'll be right with you. Hello, this is Jason. So now it's programmed. So here's how it works. Let's say a call comes in to Amy, and we're going to answer it via speakerphone. <clears throat> now notice your virtual answer key is not lit up. That means you can't use it right now. It's only going to light green when you can actually use it. That means somebody has to call you for you to use it. So from this phone, I'm actually going to press Amy's button here, and it's going to call over to, I'm, yeah, I'm going to call over to Amy. So. Right now, Amy's on the phone. She's talking to Star Signs, and she can see that Doug is now calling on the other line. So hit virtual answer. Hello, this is Jason. I see that you're calling in right now, and your call is important to me, but I'm on the line with another customer. Hold on, I'll be right with you. So what's happening here is Amy kept talking to this customer, and when Doug called in, instead of saying, hey, can you hold on, I've got another call, she just pressed the virtual answer key. And this is what it sounds like. You can press it again. Hello, this is Jason. I see that you're calling in right now and your call is important to me, but I'm on the line with another customer. Hold on, I'll be right with you. And so if she decides to hang up on the, on the call that she's on, then it rings and you've got that call, getting a little bit of feedback. So think of this. You can have more than one virtual answer key on every phone. You could have two. So your first virtual answer key could say, this is Jason. I'm on the, other line, with a, I'm on the line with another customer. Hold on, I'll be right with you. And then, let's say 30 seconds goes by, you could hit a second virtual answer key that could give options. So you could say, uh, this is Jason, I apologize, this call is lasting longer than expected. Uh, you can continue to hold and I'll be with you shortly, or you can press one now to leave me a voicemail, or you can press zero to reach the operator, or press extension 2134 to speak to Doug Boyd. You can give any employee's name and extension, and the phone system is smart enough then when it hears those DTMF tones being entered, it goes there. So zero is always the operator. One always leaves you a voicemail. And if you give any employee's name and extension, that's where it will go. <clears throat> so that is a really cool feature called virtual answer and I've never seen anyone else could actually do that. The next feature I'm gonna show you is called quick page. And think of a busy receptionist, okay, that takes a million calls a day that is constantly having to page somebody. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. I'm gonna bring a call in and answer it. ESI, how can I help you? And they say, yes, I need to talk to Dave and, uh, or Doug. And I say, Doug's not at his desk right now. And they go, can you page him? All I have to do is come down here and hit quick page, this button right here, and then the person's button I want to page. So quick page, and then I want to page Doug. When I hang up, But instead of saying extension 103, it would say, Doug Boyd, you have a call holding on line one. 
So think of a receptionist that usually takes a call and instead of her or he having to go, Doug Boyd, you have a call on line one. Doug Boyd, you have a call on line one. Then the next call. John Doe, you have a call on line four. So that's a, that's a lot of busy work for the receptionist. So instead, she can just go quick page in, the, in Doug's button and the system does the page automatically for her so she can get on to the next call. So the person that you actually did the quick page to it said the call was on line one. If they want it, they just hit hold, and it says call holding on one, and then you just hit the number one, and now you have that call. And that's how the quick page feature works. So if we'll take a look at a closer view on the 60 button phone over here again, uh, the next button down is called caller ID right here. Now, when we first started off this presentation, I told you that the call ID button was flashing and I had you press it and then turn it off so it wasn't flashing anymore. But that's how it works. If you leave your office and somebody calls you while you're away, when you come back, your caller ID button will be flashing because you've had activity to your phone while you were gone. So I'm gonna demo that now. If you hit the caller ID button. The 25 most recent calls to your station are as displayed. To view each record, press the scroll. So you want to scroll down, not up. And when you're scrolling down, you can go through the last 25 people that called you. So you'll see caller ID name and number date and time down here in the bottom left corner and if you look over here to the right it'll actually tell you what you did with the call now I've brought in quite a few calls so ANS means you answered it Let's see if I've got some in here RE means you rerouted it means you took the call and then you transferred it to someone else MISS means you missed it it means they called your phone while you're away and they hit your voicemail, but they didn't leave you a voicemail. They actually hung up, and so you missed the call. And then the next one says VM. This person left you a voicemail. So you can see if you took it, transferred it, um, missed it, or, le or were you were left a voicemail. Now remember, when you're looking at the caller ID information here, remember you have a personal Rolodex. So if you want to store somebody, remember how easy it is? Just press the button, caller ID stored. If you're scrolling through, you want to store Acme tires, or anybody else, you just hit Easy Dex. This one was already stored, it's saying, hey, you already have that contact, you don't need to do it again. Another patented feature of ESI is the redial key down here. Anytime you have caller ID in the display, through a recording, a voicemail, doesn't matter what it is, if you hit redial, it will automatically call that company on a real phone system and it'll call out. So let me repeat that again, this is a cool feature. You're, you come back and you've got a new voicemail, just hit redial, you'll call them back. Somebody in the building recorded a conversation that, they, that you needed to hear and they sent it to your phone. You hit voicemail and it shows you a recording and you're listening to it, just hit redial. That's how simple this phone is. I'm going to show on the 48 key phone over here, there's a feature called monitor. It's on both phones, but I'm going to do it on this one. And so when you press it, if you watch the display, it says MON. That's not telling you that today is Monday. That's telling you that your monitor feature is now activated. So what is it? Um, Think of the big shot executives sitting in their office and they don't always want to answer their calls. They want to screen their calls. Think of uh, in the old school, you had answering machines and you come home and you hear somebody leaving you a message. You could run over there and grab the handset and say, hey, I'm here. Or if it's somebody you want to talk to, you just say, I don't want to talk to that person right now. So while you're in monitor mode, I'm actually going to pick this phone up and call over to Doug. And you can see it ringing. Well, I'm going to hang this up so you can hear Doug's voicemail kick in on this phone. I'm going to hit speaker and watch what it does. Oops, I messed that up. I'm going to, oh, there it goes. Doug, I'm in the office but away from my desk. If you leave me a message, I'll return your call as soon as possible. So after Doug's voicemail plays, testing one, two, three, Doug is sitting at his desk. He has monitor on and he's monitoring his voicemails. Hey Doug, this is Jason. Uh, give me a call uh, when you get back. If he wants to talk to me, he'd just pick up the handset or hit speaker and we'd be talking. But in this case, he doesn't want to hear my, he doesn't want to talk to me, so he doesn't pick up. And when I hang up, he actually pops up as a voicemail, so then Doug can hit the voicemail key. Testing one, two, three. Doug is sitting at his desk. He Message delete. Sevens delete. So that's how simple uh, the monitor key works. It allows you to screen your voicemails and talk to who you'd like to talk to. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to page. Uh, from either phone, there's a pound key. And over here, here's the pound key. And the pound key actually says page on the button. 
So that's how you paid. You'd simply pick up the handset, you would hit pound, and if you hit zero on either phone, it's a page all. So when I'm paging, uh, John Doe, you got a call on line four, it's paging through every phone in the building, and it also pages through these access control devices, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So these have speakers, and when you're paging, it will page through these as well as the phones, or as I mentioned earlier, through the overhead speakers if you want. And that's how that works. The other thing I can do, this is pretty cool, got a little microphone going. You can actually page up to nine zones. So page one could be sales, two could be accounting, three could be the warehouse, four could be shipping. So you can do as many zone, uh, up to nine zones if you'd like. Okay. Uh, some people will say, can you page the whole company except for the owner? Page all, pound zero is going to page the whole company, even the owner's office. So some companies don't want the owner to be bothered. So what you could do is you could set page, one, uh, page zone one up and put the whole company in it except for the owner. And so they just hit page one and it's, a page, it's paging the whole company minus the owner. So that's just a little thing to, to take note of. The next thing I'm gonna show you is that was on the pound key for page. The asterisk key on both phones says pickup here and here. And so the way that works, I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to simulate a call um, coming in on the 60 button phone over here. And if you'll watch over here, this button's flashing red. That means Amy's phone is actually currently ringing because of its flashing. So I can simply hit pick up and hit Amy's extension or her button. And I intercepted that call and answered it for Amy. Works the same way. If you hit the CO call button on the 48 key phone, I don't think I've shown this, but it'll simulate a call coming to this phone. And if you'll watch over here, see how Doug's, bu uh, Doug's button is flashing red? Same thing, pick up and then hit the flashing key. And you just took that call for the other person. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to demonstrate to you is how to use the hold key. So I'm going to bring a call in and we're going to answer it with speakerphone. And you can actually see that we are talking to unavailable. There's no caller ID information. So if you'd like to put this person on hold, simply come down here and hit the red hold key and just press it real quick. And then turn the speaker off. And it says the call is actually holding on one. So you go do whatever you need to do when you come back and you want to take that call off of hold, you simply hit the hold key one time. And in the display it says they're holding on one, just hit the number one and you've got that call back, okay? Or if you'll pan out to see both phones, if you can't already, I'm gonna put this call back on hold. And I say, um, hey Doug, you've got a call on line one. So Doug could come over here and pick that same call up. He just hits hold, which is flashing red when there's somebody on hold. And it says calls holding on one, Doug hits number one. Now he's got the call. Now, anytime you put someone on hold, you can tell anybody in the building to pick them up at that number. If you hold the hold button down for 1-1000, one, one it does what's called exclusive hold. So let's try that. And then hang up. It says exclusive hold, and it says E1 real fast. That means exclusive hold means nobody can pick that call up but you. Have you ever been irritated? You take a call and it's a really important call and you put them on hold and then somebody in the building accidentally picks that call off of hold and takes your call and you go back and they're gone. That's when you want to use exclusive hold. You just hold it down one one thousand and nobody can get it but you. So when you come back and hit hold, it says calls holding E1 exclusive on one. You just press the number one and you got your call back. Okay. Remember, you can always hit Easy Dex and store the person's caller ID information. You could always come over here and record the call, whatever you want to do, all of those cool features. I'm going to hang up now. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is something really cool, and I've never seen any other phone system that could do this, so this is a big differentiator. Think of it, when a company buys phones and all of their employees have it, there's things that you need to be able to do all the time, and that's um, change extensions around because uh, you oftentimes want to move uh, your program buttons. I want to move Doug from this button over here and clean it up a little bit. Um, a speed dial for your spouse or your top customers or something like that. Or cool features that you need to access. You're constantly needing to change buttons around. With most phone systems out there, that can be very difficult. You may need to call the IT person to help you or dig through a, you know, a 
a thing that looks like a telephone book, but they call it their manual, and it can be very hard. With ESI, once again, easy. It's the easiest system in the industry to make those changes for users. So if somebody buys a phone system, let's just say they're going to have it for eight to ten years, it better be easy and simple for them to use, or it can be a very big point of frustration. I can't tell you how many companies out there have bought a phone system because of name recognition, only to put the phone system in, and then once it's installed and they go, hey, how do I do a conference call? And then all of a sudden they're like, you're kidding me. How do I change my greeting? Oh, it's real simple. You just hit five keystrokes. Oh my gosh. And then they realize that they've made a mistake just off name recognition, but they didn't actually see how the phone system worked. Let me show you how easy it is on an ESI. When you're in your car and you're listening to your favorite radio station, all you have to do to program it usually is hold the button in until it beeps, and that's how you program it. Well, it's the same with our telephones here. So I'm just going to pick a random button over here, and we'll pick this one. If I want to make this a speed dial, you simply hold it down until the phone starts talking. This feature let go. Is programmed as a speed Hit 9 to get an outside line, and then make up a number. When you're done, just hit this button again. This feature key is programmed as a speed dial key. As so now when you hit it, it's going to speed dial that phone number. I've never seen any system in the industry that can just allow you to hold the button down and put a speed dial number in that easily. Um, you can do the same with this phone over here. I'll show you in a minute. So the next thing is an extension. So this right here calls Amy. And if I press it, it should call this phone. And it does. You're getting a little feedback there. So Amy's extension 100. So I'm going to come to the same button and hold it down until it talks. This feature key is programmed. Put extension 100. And then when I press it, it says Amy. So when I press that key, I'm going to pick up the handset so we don't get feedback. And if I press it, it'll call that phone. See how easy it is? Oops, getting feedback anyway. So the next thing, so I've shown you how to do a speed dial and turn it into an extension. The next thing is a feature. So hold it down until it talks. This key is programmed as a speed And your EasyDex key, hit it twice and scroll through every feature of the telephone. Here's your caller ID key we talked about a while ago. If you hit that, it's a caller ID button. Account codes, headset key. You got a Plantronics headset. You can simply program that key right there. Remember your greeting in the office. There's your out greeting. Press four to call me on my cell phone. Page greeting three. Press three to page me throughout the building. Uh, monitor mode to screen your calls. Virtual answers. There's all kinds of cool features in here. You just make it whatever you want. In this case, I will make it a let me see, service observe key. This key is programmed as a service observe key. And that's how simple it is. You can make it whatever feature you want. Very simple. Again, nobody else can do that. Um, I'm going to come over here. So, that, or before we do, the, this piece of paper on here is called a DESI strip, D-E-S-I. You order those from DESI.com, and this is where you write the person's name or type the person's name or line or feature or whatever you want. Uh, this phone right here, this is a Desi-less phone. There's no longer a piece of paper. You actually have an LCD screen. And so one powerful thing about this phone is what we call visual voicemail. Okay, so if I hit my voicemail key, all these buttons that show what they're programmed as right now on the display, when I hit it, watch what it does. So now it's showing me my voicemails. On the left over here it says new, and off to the right it's actually showing me all uh, some other information. So if I hit the button to the right, it shows me the envelope information, the caller ID, name, number, date, and time. So let's say you're looking for a voicemail in particular. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, this one here. This is it. And when you find the voicemail you want to hear, you hit the button to the left. I'll just press this one. So once you hit your voicemail key, I'm going to do it one more time. It shows your, your new voicemails to the left. The ones below that that don't say new are your older voicemails. Pick the one you want, play it on this side. It's a really cool thing. Uh, the other thing you can do down here if you're looking at the display, if you pan over, so you have 16 programmable keys, you can actually go to the next screen and you have 16 more. And if you go to the next screen, you have 16 more, so you have a total of 48 programmable buttons with this telephone. Um, it's really cool. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you over here is how to quickly program a button on this phone because it's desiless. So if you wanted to program a button, um, we'll use uh, the greeting to button here. You just hold it down. This key is programmed as shown. And if you want to make it Doug's extension, which is 103, just go 103. And then when you hit this key, watch what it shows in the display. Enter the letters. Shows you Doug. And then pound is enter on this phone. Thank you. Goodbye. If you hit this one, it calls over to Doug. If you want to make that same key a um, speed dial, you simply hold it down. This key is programmed as a station key as displayed. Enter the number for the line key, a station, mailbox, speed dial number. So you hit nine to get an outside line. Two, one, four, make up a number. And then when you hit it, it says the name. Let's say it's a company name, ABC. You go A, pound, B, pound, C, pound, pound. Hit pound twice to enter it. Now you can see ABC, that's a speed dial. That could be anybody you want, and when you press it, that's the number that it would actually call. And then, of course, the features are the same way. Just hold it down, easy to X twice, scroll through any feature of the phone. You want to move your caller ID key to there, and then just hit pound. Goodbye. Now it says caller ID key. That's how simple that is to do. Um, another, once again, huge differentiator because think of other phone systems. I want to put a, a feature there. You're calling the IT guy most of the time. And the IT guy at busy companies, he doesn't always come when you want him to. He may come a day or two later or something like that. So this allows the users who are using the phone system eight hours a day for the next eight to 10 years, they have the flexibility and the power to do some of the things that they need to do. Uh, one more cool thing I wanted to show is the uh, call forward key, and that is located right here. And if you hit call forward, you can put the extension you want to forward your phone to or hit their button. In this case, I'm going to call forward over to, that's um, Doug's phone, so I'm going to hit 103. And right here at the very bottom, you can see call forward to extension 103, which is Doug. So now if a call comes into this phone, it's forwarded over here, and it's going to ring on this phone. Real simple. If you want to turn call forward off, you simply hit the call forward key one time, and then hit release or speaker, and you can see that it has now disappeared, so any calls coming to this phone are going to actually ring here. Just like that. The next thing I'm going to show you, um, and we'll want to be able to see both phones, is what we call ACD, Automatic Call Distribution. And for call centers, like if you call into a company and they have a technical support department or a sales department or something like that, oftentimes you'll want to put them into what's called ACD, Automatic Call Distribution. And what that means is if everybody's on the phone, when somebody hangs up, it will automatically distribute the next call to that available agent and so on and so forth. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and it says ACD, this button's lit red, and when you press it, you basically just log into that ACD department. You're saying, I'm ready to take calls, okay? And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a call coming in, and I'm going to answer that call. And I am talking to Shannon Smith, so you've got caller ID, name, and number. And so here's how ACD works. If another call comes in and you're in this department and there's nobody else to take it, you hear that beep. What that means is it's actually putting somebody in the queue. So you see you're in the sales department in this example. You're talking to Shannon Smith. There's one person in the queue waiting to talk to you. So in the bottom right corner, it's showing you how long you've been on the call with this current customer. And then over here it says WT wait in the bottom left hand corner. That shows you how long the other person waiting to speak to you has been waiting for. If another call comes in, it'll do the same thing. So think if there's 10 agents in this department, everybody's display looks the same. So if all 10 agents are on a phone, everybody can see that there's now two people waiting in the queue for the next available agent. And so the way it works is if you hang up, Whoever's been holding the longest in the queue immediately rings your phone and you can uh, take that next call. It takes a few seconds, but after a few seconds goes by, it'll actually refresh the screen and it'll show you how many people are waiting in the queue again.
Okay, so there's one in the queue. I'm going to simulate another call coming in. Oh, wait a minute. I need to do it on this phone. Okay, so we got two people in the queue. So real world scenario, sometimes departments can be small, large, whatever the case may be. But in this case, Amy says, hey, Doug, I'm getting kind of backed up. I've got a bunch of people in the queue over here, whatever the case may be. Could you please log in and help me out? So one of the other agents, if he comes in and hits log in to this automatic call distribution department, watch the queue. It's going to go from three to two, and it's going to immediately distribute a call over here to Doug. He just logged in. Here comes the first call. Now the queue went to two. He's going to hang up, and there's two people waiting. He gets the next call. Queue goes to one. Um, there's another thing called wrap, and you can do wrap on this phone here. Um, or there's an ACD wrap key over here. This is a feature you can put in there if you like, but you don't have to. It's totally up to the customer. What is wrap? Let's say I'm an ACD agent and I'm hanging up on a call and there's people waiting in the queue, but I'm not, I need to key in some notes from that call. So I could hit wrap and when the second I hang up, it will not distribute the next call to me. It's going to allow me to wrap up what I'm doing from my previous call, get a drink of water, finish keying in my notes, and then when I hit wrap again, then it will send the next call to me. Now, a lot of bosses out there say, well, I don't want to just give them that kind of leeway because they'll be in wrap all day and they're not working as hard. So you can actually set a timer on the wrap key. So if the agent hits wrap, you're only giving them 30 seconds or one minute or a minute and a half. And then after that timer expires, the next call is coming automatically. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that for a second. Uh, right now, there is one person in the queue. I'm going to hit wrap and I'm going to hang up, but it does not ring my phone. It's allowing this person to finish up what they're doing from the previous call, and then when the timer expires or they hit wrap again, it immediately presents the next call to that station, and then they have the call. So let's say this person doesn't have any calls now, there's nobody in the queue, and decides he's going to lunch. He just hits the logout key and goes to lunch, and now no more calls will be distributed to that phone. So now this person over here hangs up on the call. There's nobody in the queue, and Amy decides she's going to lunch. Well, if she's the last agent to log off, it's going to give her a warning saying, hey, there's nobody else available to take calls. Are you sure you want to log out right now? Just kind of gives you a checks and balances type thing. So when she goes to log out and hits it, listen to what it says. Warning, you are the last agent to log off from this ACD department group. There will be no agents available to answer calls directed to this group. Okay, so it gives you that warning. So if she wanted, she could simply log back in or whatever. Now we have other things too. Uh, this isn't the training session for that, but we have something called ACD Supervisor, which is a piece of software that the manager could use on their PC and they could see real time statistics on what's happening with those agents in that call center. You can see when they're on the phone with somebody, real time, the caller ID name and number, who they're talking to. You could service, observe, and listen to their conversations with the customer. You could do instant message chat, communicating with them, helping them with their pitch or helping them through. You could send a chat message saying, hey, conference me in, I want to be a part of this. So there's a lot of cool things. You can run full reports on their call activities and all of that is possible as well. So the next thing I'm going to show you ESI's Hallmark feature. This is the coolest feature that we have and I always recommend it's the, typically the last thing you show when you're doing your phone demo and it's called the help key. And so when you do a full presentation talking about all these cool features and bells and whistles, you always finish and you say something like this, that was easy, right? And they're all thinking, yes, that was easy compared to any other demos we've seen. Um, and then you can kind of joke with them a little bit and say, does everybody remember everything I said? Could you do it right back right now? And they'll kind of laugh and say, no, there's no way. So you say, that's okay because ESI has a help key located right here on this phone and a help key located right here on this phone. And so you can get the help you need at any time. And ESI is the only phone system that can do this. So I'm going to simulate a call coming in right now and answer it. And the way I'd explain it to the customer, I'd say, let's say you decide that this is the right phone system for you. This is the perfect solution. Our company is going to come out and install it for you. And we're going to train all of your employees on how to use it until you give us the two thumbs up and you say, you know what, we've got it. We can do this. And then we're going to leave, and then without question, you're going to forget about 80% of what we just taught you really quick. 
So what happens is your employee that just got trained is going to take the very first phone call and it's just natural. They're going to freeze up. What do I do? So let's say the person you're talking to says, yes, can you please transfer me over to Doug? And you don't know how. All you have to do is hit help while you're on a call. Just tell the person you're talking to, yeah, I'll be happy to transfer you. Can you hold on one second though? Hit help. Your current call has been placed on hold. Press any key to hear a description of its use and how it is currently programmed. The transfer key allows you to transfer a call to a station that does not have a program station key. To transfer an outside call, press the transfer key and dial the extension number. You can hang up immediately. You hit help, you go back to your original call. Let's say they said, can you, yeah, can you put me on a conference call, please? And you don't know how. Absolutely. Can you hold on just one second? Thank you. Hit help. Your current call. Conference. To create a conference, while connected to a call, press the conference key. Call the party you wish to add to the conference. Then press the conference key again to connect all three parties together. Repeat these steps to add additional parties to the conference. You can add a call. Back to your original call. So think of how powerful this is. Um, you can train your employees how to use the phone system and they're still going to forget things as they go along. How powerful and how much better would it be if when your, when your employee is talking to your customer and they need to do something on the phone and they don't know how to, it's frustrating to your employee and it's really frustrating to the customer. But now you have a verbal help guide to help you right when you need it at all times. Let's say you purchase an ESI solution and five years from now you hire a brand new employee and they come in. Well traditionally that's a, it, it's hard, you've got to train them on the new phone system. Well all you do is you say, with ESI it's real simple. When the phone rings, pick it up and if you don't know how to do something, simply press help and any button on the phone and it'll tell you in about 20 seconds or less how to use that feature and then to hit help again you go back to your original call. So starting from day one till the, till, for as long as you have that phone system you will always have the help you need. If you're not actually on a call you can hit help as well and it's dummy proof. We teach it at a second grade level almost so watch how simple this is when I hit help. So we've thought of everything. So you can actually go through a tutorial that's like 30 or 40 minutes long teaching them how to use the phone. And if they go to lunch in the middle of it and they come back, the tutorial will say, would you like to pick up where you left off? So they can even start then. When you go on a customer appointment and you're demoing the phone system, uh, the customer won't always tell you that they're nervous about it. But one thing I can guarantee you is they are. So the first thing that the owner is thinking, the IT person and everybody in charge is I want to make sure I'm making the right decision for my company um, and I want to make sure that all my employees can learn this phone system as quickly as possible, have the technology, the features, making this more efficient as quickly as possible and get back to business as usual. And so they're not usually going to say I'm real nervous about it, but know that they are. So if you finish with the help key and you can say this is the easiest phone system and Say it with confidence, don't say it as hesitant because it is. Nobody wants to buy a phone system that's one of the best, they want to buy the best. They don't want to buy something that's pretty user friendly. It's the most user friendly phone in the industry. I don't want to buy, I want to buy something that has, they don't want to buy something with it that has pretty good features. They want the best features in the industry, they want the best. So have confidence in your phone system when you're demoing it and you're selling it to them because you are selling the best. Okay, so next I'm going to tell you why we call this a presence management reader instead of access control, but it's really both. We call this presence management because the employees in the office are going to have keys or fobs to get in and out of the building. And when they come in and fob into the reader, it'll actually show on the telephones and let everybody know in the office when they're in and out. So let's demonstrate that for a minute. So if you can, pan to where you can see both phones and the reader uh, all at the same time. Remember this, I told you earlier, I waved it across it for the first time so it, in, so it connected to Amy's phone. So watch right now, Amy's in greeting is lit green. She's in the office. When she goes to lunch, watch what happens here. Goodbye. It says goodbye and tells Amy adios as she's leaving. It just went from in greeting to out greeting. And it put the phone in do not disturb. 
So when Amy's gone, if she was in a cubicle environment or anything like that, if somebody calls her phone, it's not going to ring. She's in do not disturb. It's just going straight to voicemail. Anybody that walks up and looks at her phone, it says off premise. So they can actually see that Amy's out of the building. And one other big thing, look at Doug's phone over here. I guess you can see them all. But Doug's phone has Amy orange, which usually means do not disturb if it's steady, but it's winking or flashing, which means she's off premise. So if Amy goes into do not disturb, it's going to show everybody that has a button program for her in the building, solid orange. But if she fobs out and leaves the office, it's going to be, it's going to wink or flash. So think about it. If someone calls and Doug's talking to them and they say, can I talk to Amy? He can look down here, presence management and go, Amy's out of the office right now. Do you want her voicemail or would you like me to try her on her cell phone? It eliminates the hassle of, let me see if Amy's here, paging around the building. It immediately tells Doug that she's gone. Now watch this, when Amy comes back and she comes back from lunch and she fobs in, watch what happens on both phones. It moved Amy out of do not disturb, put her back in her end greeting, I'm in the office, leave a message. And now Doug can see that Amy's button uh, is no longer flashing orange, that she is in the building or on premise. One more time, Goodbye. everything's flashing and goes to do not disturb, and Amy's back, just like that. That's where we get presence management. If you think about it, companies nowadays do not like doing business with five different vendors. In other words, I don't wanna do business with this company for my phones, this one for my cameras and DVR, this one for my access control, this one for my computers over here. Sometimes they have no choice, but if you can provide a solution that could give them their phone system, access control, the capability to do a surveillance cameras, and it can all be done by one box, a communication server or an IP 900 with one vendor, you. So if anything goes wrong, the old term was one throat to choke or one hand to shake. It doesn't matter what it is. If you can provide a solution that can do all of those things in a business management tool called a comm server or an IP 900, that gives you a huge advantage over your competition. And if you can come in and put all that in, and if the customer's unhappy, they call you and you come out and take care of them, that's gonna be easier for them. And the other powerful thing about it is, if they were doing business with multiple vendors, in other words, access control over here, surveillance cameras over there, and the phone system over here, none of that technology is tied together. It doesn't work together. With us, that's the difference that makes us so special with these powerful differentiators is, when I wave a fob, it tells me I'm in the office or out of the office. It's connected to the actual phone system. They're integrated together. If this was somebody else's access control device, the phone system would have nothing to do with it. Let me give you an example. This is actually a telephone without a keypad. Other access control companies, they're not telephones. They're strictly access control. If you'll pan down here at this 60 button phone for a second that belongs to Amy, the receptionist, I'm going to simulate a call coming in and you just keep it there for a minute and Amy answers and let's say they say can I talk to Doug and Amy sees Doug out the window at the front door and this access control device is it is at the front door Amy could simply come down here and hit transfer in the extension of this reader okay which is 106 so transfer 106 and we're connected. So Amy could say, Doug, I have a call for you. And when she hangs up, zoom in on this reader here for a minute, you can actually see caller ID, name and number. It's a telephone and when you hit call, you just answer the call. It says connected and if you press it again, it hangs up. So this is a telephone without a keypad. So if someone was in the kitchen, I could call that extension. John, are you in there? I got a call for you and hang up and it would go in there. I've seen veterinarians put this in the room where they're doing surgeries and somebody can call in through a speakerphone. How much longer are you gonna be in surgery? Uh, 10 minutes, okay, thank you. You can put these anywhere you want. These readers can be digital or IP, okay? So you can have a digital phone system on a comm server or you can have IP port cards in a comm server and you can have IP readers or you can put these IP readers on the IP 900. It goes on either system. So think of it like this. You may have a pure IP phone system here in the company, so you're gonna stick with an IP reader. Or how about this? You could put an IP reader anywhere you want. 
Let's say you have a warehouse five miles away and nobody's there right now. And FedEx shows up at the door over there and they hit the call button. So if you'll show the 60 phone for a second and the reader, if you can. Amy picks up and they say, yes, this is FedEx. I have a package to deliver. Amy can go, okay, while she's talking to them, she can say, I'm gonna open the door and just set the package inside and then shut the door when you leave. She hits the unlock key. It unlocks the door five miles away at the warehouse. The FedEx guy comes in and sets the package inside the door and then shuts the door as he leaves. Amy, through a camera connected to an ESI system, could actually be watching on her computer, the surveillance camera the whole time, watching the FedEx guy set the package down and leave. Well, if he doesn't shut the door all the way, on the demo kit it doesn't show it, but the system has the capability to do this, it would actually say door ajar in the display. So Amy could quickly call 106, excuse me, sir, you didn't shut the door all the way. Could you please pull it shut all the way? He says, oh, absolutely, and he shuts the door all the way, and then the door ajar would disappear out of the display. So as long as the strike lock the electrician puts in the door has the ability to support that feature door ajar, our readers can actually do that as well. So think of it this way. If you have a reader at the front door of your office and it's a Saturday and you have an IP phone at your house, when somebody hits the call button, it can ring your IP phone at home. And you pick it up and it's one of your employees saying, I left my laptop or I've got to get something out of the office. If you trust that person, you could hit door unlock and you could unlock the front door at the office from your house. So think how powerful that is. Okay, so the next thing I want to tell you about this presence management reader is it also does reporting. So give you an example. Let's say you had one of these on an internal door on the IT room and there was a laptop on the table in there and I saw it, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. And I go into the room and the laptop's gone. Well, I could simply go into Media Manager and run a report and see who fobbed into the IT room in the last 30 minutes to start uh, going and asking people, have you seen the laptop? And I see that only one person went in there, Tom. I go ask Tom, hey, do you have the laptop? And he said, yeah, I got it right over here. I had to use it for a minute. And I said, yes, sir, I need that back. So you can do that. You can also do reporting on external readers, which are the ones on the outside of the building where customers and employees come and go. Employees never like this, but remember, you're selling phone systems to the owners of companies and sometimes IT guys. They're the decision makers also, but um, owners sometimes like to do what we call big brother. They want to know, and managers as well, they want to know who's coming and going, who's taking an extra 30 minutes for lunch, are you late to work twice a week, or maybe you're an all-star and you're staying 45 minutes late every day and they can see that, hey, you're really putting in the time to be successful at this company. That's the great thing about it is any employee that has a fob, the manager can see every time they come and go from the building. So if you have to terminate somebody's employment, you can do that. If you want to hand out bonuses, you can do all those things as well, but you have all of that information. You can also do something called time and attendance. So think of it this way. When an employee fobs, goodbye. said goodbye, they just clocked out. And then they come back from lunch, Welcome. Amy just clocked in. So this access control presence management device with FOBS can be connected with a third party software uh, called WASP or, and it can do time and attendance through QuickBooks, ADP or anything like that. So if the company has hourly employees clocking in and clocking out, it can do all of that. So let me reiterate one more time. You're selling against Toshiba, Avaya, Shortel, some of these competitors of ours selling a phone system and you go in with a powerful phone system with all the features I've shown you today and access control with fobbing events, doing time and attendance, doing presence, letting you know when employees are in and out of the building, taking better care of your customers, making employees more efficient, all of those types of things. You can see why this is so powerful. Imagine like the example I gave earlier, the doctor's office, that you, uh, Toshiba comes in there, one of our competitors, and shows a phone system, and you show a system that can do everything it can do and then so much more, uh, eliminating liability by keeping doors locked and patients can't come through until it's their turn and all the different types of companies out there that can benefit from this. You can see why now this is our biggest differentiator. Lastly, I um, wanted to point out a few things. You have a backlit display 
And this is a weather resistant uh, presence management reader. So rain, snow can hit it directly. You do not have to have an enclosure. And if you look at the back of it right here, you've got the cord coming out. There's actually a way that you can run the wires from the alarm system on the building uh, into the reader. So if a burglar comes up and tries to rip it away from the wall, it's actually gonna pull that wire out, which would trip the alarm on the building. So that is a, a, a security measure that it has as well. One important thing to point out, after you've done a full presentation in front of the customer, chances are that you've recorded voicemails, um, you've put recordings in there, you've reprogrammed buttons, you've moved things around, so on and so forth. ESI thought all, thought all about that, and so we actually have a way that you can reinitialize your demo kit after you're done with an appointment easily. And it takes about five minutes to boot back up, and when it's done, you're ready to go to your next sales appointment, and everything goes back to its factory settings, ready to do your presentation all over again. So if you'll pan down to the 60 button phone that belongs to Amy, and you can do this from either phone, it doesn't matter. All you're gonna do is hit program hold and spell the word demo, which is 3366 pound. So I'm gonna demonstrate that now. Program. Good afternoon. Hold. Perhaps please enter your password. Spell the word demo, D-E-M-O, and pound is enter. Please stand by. This process will take from two to 10 minutes. It says two to 10 minutes. It usually takes about four or five minutes. The phones will go completely uh, dark. So you'll think, oh my gosh, did I unplug my demo kit? What happened here? That's perfectly normal. It'll take a couple of minutes. It'll come back up and everything is back to normal, ready for your next demo. So in closing, I would like to say that today I showed you features and functionality, gave you a few helpful sales tips as we went along. But there's one important thing that you have to take from this. You have to learn these features, and no matter what company you're standing in front of, you have to be able to tie those features into their business. What does it mean to them? In other words, the worst thing you can do, if you wanna lose a deal, go in there with your demo kit and talk generically about all the features and bells and whistles, and you probably are not gonna get it. But if you'll take the feature and think about how is this feature gonna help this company How's it gonna help this employee in this department, this other employee in a totally different type of department, and so on and so forth, and going out. Let me give you an example. The record button. You can tell a room full of people, you can record anything at any time. Memos, meetings, or live conversations. But what you wanna do is you wanna get them thinking about it. So let's say you're um, in an attorney's office. How would the record button benefit the attorney? Well, he or she is probably gonna think, I bill my clients by how much time I'm on the phone with them. So if I can record the conversation, I can bill them later for the exact amount of time I was on the phone. Also, attorneys may not want to sit there and write down everything about the case. If they could simply hit the record button, they would have it because it's going to come up in their inbox archived as a WAV file so they could archive it away. So later when they want to refresh themselves on the case, they have the full recording of every time that they've talked to the client. What would the record button mean to a doctor? Well, maybe if he's talking to a patient who's been t has a very serious condition, the doctor could maybe record just for his own personal use something about that. Or maybe if it's a HIPAA violation, you wouldn't use that one, but how would the record button work for a sales rep at a car dealership? Or uh, a nurse or something like that. So you're starting to get the point. You don't want to go into um, a funeral home and talk about the paging feature. I'm not trying to be funny here, but seriously, I've seen sales reps do that. They'll go into a funeral home and this is how you page. You'll just watch the person looking to buy a phone system look over like, we're not buying from this person. So really learn all these features and think about the company. Look at their website, learn everything you can about the business reading and go in there informed and then ask them, why are they buying a new phone system? What features would they like to see in the next phone system? Show them those and then take all the cool features you know it can do and tie those in and really design a solution that's right for them. Anybody can sell a phone system, only you and your company can design the perfect solution for that customer every time. That is the key to being successful selling phone systems, access control, surveillance, and so on and so forth. Um, I appreciate your time. I hope you'll practice this and put everything I told you to good use and uh, goodbye and good selling.